to modern day psychology, music has its advantages and disadvantages. Some have indicated that music is a form of relaxation as well as uh, a form of medicine for the heart. Many people have made it a necessity for music within their daily lives. We see weddings not happening without music or dancing in them. We see people going to work and back from work without music being played in the background. You go, you go into a shopping mall, a restaurant, a grocery shop, music has to be played in the background. We see, we go even to the further extent that when people even actually go to Islamic centers, they have music playing in their car while they're going to listen to a lecture. I have lived in Canada for the majority of my life, and I've looked at the variety of different music genres, artists, from Jay-Z to Drake to Rihanna, and the majority of hip-hop, rap, rock, R&B, and so on and so forth. Now this, the topic of music, has affected our lives and the lives of many youth across the world. Now in what way and how did it affect us? We look at, for example, it even began to be played in our Islamic so-called centers. Sometimes when you have a wedding in an Islamic center, music is played in the background, either Arabic or English. Now how do we go about solving this? What's the solution to this? Now, Sayyid Ammar Naqshwan is joining us tonight to talk about the topic of music on the eighth night of Ramadan. Sayyidna, Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as wa rahmatullah. Very well, thank Allah you, very well. Allah Looking very sharp today. Thank you, Is thank you, likewise. Allah uh, salamkum. Sayyidna, uh, now, if we were to go about talking about the aspect of music and looking at the, the various angles of it, how or what are the main terminologies that are looked at or mentioned? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. It's, uh, it's the topic that we get asked about the most at any question and yes. answer session. As in the last 17 years, I cannot remember a question and answer session finishing without a question on about, music. About music, yeah. And it really goes to show you that it's, it's, it's uh, not only part and parcel of the life and the history of the human being, but it's something that can be addictive as well. Yes. As in there are people out there dare I say, who know more lyrics of music than they know more verses of the Holy Quran. Quran yeah. uh, if you were to ask many of the Muslim world, I'd say, you know, I'd say if you look at over, you know, over 50% of the Muslim world will probably know more lyrics of musicians than they know verses of the Holy Quran. <laughs> yes, the Quran true. seems to be just simply um, a book that has to be respected, but not necessarily read. Whereas the lyrics of musicians, people can memorize them in a split second. Yes. Now, when we're coming to discuss music, it's not just a matter of saying music is haram and that's the end of the discussion. Yeah. It's a very complicated discussion. It is. It, is. it really is. And when I say complicated, there's a lot of people out there who might frown at, you know, a person saying the discussion concerning music is complicated. But there's a number of issues which people are asking about and even the Arabic usage for what is seen as being music and the usage of the what was the originally Greek word which we use today music even that differs in Arabic you're focusing when you're using the words which discuss music you're looking at you know Ghina and Ogniya for example you're looking at Tarab these are the type of words which can always be found within any discussion of music. Ghina will focus more when you're looking at this topic in the Arabic language. That's more focusing on the larynx and the movement up and down and the pitch change yes. and so on. Yes. Maybe the term music when used in English is more looking at the instrumental aspect. In Arabic you're looking more at the movement of the tone and the yes. voice and so on and the undulations that can be seen. Yes. Secondly, the legal practitioners who you're asking questions about music being halal or haram, many of the names you just mentioned are not necessarily names they're going to say, okay, hold on, let me just listen to what this guy is saying, yeah. and then I'll get back to you. So you're not exactly going to go to a grand scholar and say to him, uh, is Jay-Z halal? Is Kanye West halal? Is yeah. Rihanna halal? Is Selena Gomez halal? Is Taylor Swift halal? And by the way, for the viewers, I only know these names because of the guy who's presenting. I really don't know much about these people. Allah. But what you find is you, the legal practitioner of any religion, be it the head scholar of Islam, the mufti, the marja, 
the, the, the Pope, the rabbis, you know, you, you, they're not going to be people who are going to say to you, okay, wait one second, let me just download on iTunes, for example, what, you know, Kid Cudi is doing, or for example, you know, what, uh, what any of the other famous uh, singers have sung, or you're not going to find someone living in Lebanon who's going to say to you that, let's just listen to what Nancy or Amr or Haifa or any of them have to sing before I come back to you with what, whether it's no. halal or haram. Already there's an obstacle there. Yeah. So what's happening here is you've got these terminologies which talk of the voice movement, which talk of whether ecstasy or an ecstatic uh, movement of the body, for example, is going to result. So when you're looking at ghana, you're looking at tarab, you're looking at all of these words, you're looking at lahu, you're looking at lagh, you're looking at words of whether, whether the words of the musician versus the tune of the musician. These are also things to consider. Yes, of course. You're also looking at which things are associated with frivolous gathering, like which genres of music or which tracks are going to be played at a club and which ones would never be played at a club. Mm -hmm. And from there, a person's going to ask the question that if this particular piece of music would never be played in the gatherings of transgressors or the gatherings of sin, then would it be allowed or not? Then you've got another discussion which is about cultural chanting versus what is classified as instrumental music. Mm -hmm. Then you've got discussions about which instruments are specific for a use, meaning they're only used in Dis, uh, gatherings of disobedience and sin and which instruments can be used positively and negatively that's a discussion mm -hmm. so from the outset anyone who thinks the discussion on music is an easy discussion it's not mm -hmm. what's clear as I said in the beginning is that there are many Muslims in the world today who know more lyrics of musicians than they know verses of the Holy Quran mm -hmm. and that has to be a point of reflection in the month of the Quran that why is it that I may have memorized the lyrics of a musician inside out you say the first word i'll say the rest but when it comes to the verses of the holy quran you know what i don't have time you know what i'm busy you know what it's difficult you know you know you know these are things to reflect upon as well in this discussion mm -hmm. now you mentioned a lot of points uh, just right there uh, but sometimes we, the question that is always raised or the discussion what's the islamic view how did how did islam approach the discussion on music sure the first area, in my opinion, in discussing Islam's approach on music, if I were going to tell you, when you listen to music, which part of your body are you using to listen? Naturally, the, the answer would be? The ears. The ears. Wonderful creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anyone in the world of biology, anyone who has studied the ear, it's an amazing creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes. But like any of the parts of the body in Islam, they have a haq over us. They have a right over us. Mm -hmm. What kind of right? What type of right? Let me explain. Yes. The book I believe is the best book to give to a non-Muslim is the Risalat al-Huquq of Imam Zain al-Abideen mm -hmm. salam. Imam Zain al-Abideen, as we know, is the great grandson of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him and his family. This work, Risalat al-Huquq, is a monumental book to give to any non-Muslim when you want to understand how everything around us in existence has a right over us which should never be abused. Treaties of rights. The treaties of rights. You know how you've got the Magna Carta and you've yeah. got the Declaration of Rights and the you know, conventions and so on. Imam Zain al-Abideen, Risalat al-Hukuq, does something wonderful. He begins by making the human reflect after Karbala has taken place, the human being has completely forgotten the rights that God has entrusted them with. Mm -hmm. He's forgotten God's rights, forgotten the right of the self, forgotten the right of the eyes, the rights of their fathers, the rights of their mothers, the rights of non-Muslims. Imam Zain al-Abideen decides that it's about time the Muslim sits back and asks themselves a question. The ears that God gave me, they are entrusted to me and there's a responsibility like my hands, for example. They have a right over me. 
My feet have a right over me. Someone might say where? Surah Yasin. Yes. Yes? The second last page. You see to Kalimuna? ID him. ID him. Tashhadu? Arjuluhum. Our hands will speak on the Day of Judgment about what they did yes. in halal or in haram. haram. Our feet will speak about where they walked in halal or haram. haram. Because on the Day of Judgment, our body parts will tell God whether we looked after them or whether we abused them. Yes, even the skin. All of our body parts yes. will speak. Even Imam Zayn al and Sa'ad al talks of the rights of your private parts. Whether they were used in halal or in haram. Now, when you come to the rights of the ear of the human being, look how beautiful this is. When you come to the UN Declaration or you come to the Magna Carta, I don't think any of them have spoken about the right of the ears. They haven't. Ahlul Bayt, السلام, the beacons of knowledge that they are, that have even discussed wow. the right of the ears of the human being. Wow. What does Imam Zain al-Abidin say? And I'd like this to be the first part of our discussion. Why? Because a lot of people will say, well, you know, are you sure it's haram? My marja says this, this marja says that. Wait, put all this aside. Your ears on the day of judgment, you're, you've been entrusted with this form of rizq. You know, there are people who can't hear. The fact that we can hear, Imam Zain al-Abidin says something phenomenal. He says, know that the right of your ear is that it is the direct pathway to your heart. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. The ear, he says, is the direct pathway to the heart. So make sure you accustom your ear to listen to that which is good. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Ahlul Bayt have not left an area, alayhim salam, but they've discussed it. Wow. The right of your ear is that you know it is the pathway to your heart. Accustom your ear to hear that which is good, not obscenities and foul language. Now, when I hear Imam Zain al Abidin tell me that my ear, the right of it, is that I accustom to it, that it listens to that which is good, because it's the pathway to my heart. Why is he telling us that it's the pathway to the heart? What I listen to is going to have a bearing on the purity of my heart. We know on the Day of Judgment. On the Day of Judgment, our wealth and our children will be no avail to us. What will be of avail to us? That pure heart. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us many times in the Quran that try and ensure that you come back to me with that qalb salim. Yes. That is the sign of your success. One of the avenues of the Qalb Salim, one of the avenues which man has to consider has a bearing on the direction of their heart is what? Is what? the ears. Have you noticed how Allah puts the heart with the ear on many occasions in the Quran? Khatam Allah ala qulubihim wa ala sam'ihim Subhanallah wa ala sam'ihim wa ala absarihim Allah has put a seal on their hearts. One of the directions is the yeah. Yeah. The other direction is the eye. خاتم الله على قلوبهم وعلى سمعهم وعلى أبصارهم. Or in the sam, the basar, the fuad, all of you will be asked about how you looked after them. All of you will be asked about how you were responsible with them. Now, if my ear has a hak on me, when my ear has a hak on me. I have to ensure that what I listen to in my ears is not lies, not backbiting, yes. not gossiping. You see, the more of these that I listen to, the more my heart is far away from what? It's far away from the qalb, which is known as qalb and salim. salim yes. I have to make sure that I do not accustom my ears and abuse the right of my ears Except that I make sure that what they listen to is good. Mm -hmm. Why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran say, اجتنبوا كثيرا من الظن إن بعض الظن إذ ولا تجسسوا ولا يغتب بعضكم بعض All of these ayahs in the Quran, why is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us about them? Because Allah is reminding us, the heart, the ear have a relationship. Don't damage that relationship. Wow. And in the Quran, God says a wonderful, there's a wonderful ayah in the Quran, no two hearts in man's body, yes? Never will you find two hearts in the body of one man. Meaning, 
you got to make a decision about where you want to be on the day of judgment. Mm -hmm. You want to be with the people who've come back with that pure heart that's not being tainted by foul language. That's not being tainted by frivolous words or words that oppose the teachings of Ahl al-Bayt You see, sometimes if I'm going to be listening to music, I've got to ask myself, that which is coming through my ear to my heart, is it something Imam al Hussein would be proud of? Can you give us a few examples? A few examples in terms of what? Lyrics of musicians? No. No, but I when mean... I, when, when we're looking at the lyrics of musicians, there is a general principle. Yes. That general principle is that the lyrics of the musicians that I'm listening to has to be in line with the teachings of Al Muhammad. Now, how many funny? times can you tell me that there are musicians whose words are in line with the teachings of Al Muhammad, yeah, alayhi salam, or the way they conduct themselves in that music video? Thank God for, you know, for MTV revealing all of this. MTV, if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't see the video. We'd only see the tune. <laughs> when we'd hear the tune, we hear the words, the words are so nice. When you see the video, wow. if you're going to see bikini-clad girls on the videos, if you're going to see a guy proud of his dr drug taking or, for example, drinking or lascivious ways, then that should give you an indication. What am I listening to? I, who Imam Zain al-Abni has told me that the right of my ear is that I understand that it is the pathway to my heart. So I should accustom it to that which is good. I lower myself and degrade myself from the words of Imam Zain al abidin and start taking on the words of those who are far away from the path of Al Muhammad alayhi That's a valid point. Therefore, when we begin the discussion on music, it's not about going straight away to a legal discussion or legal terminologies yeah. only. There is a need for us to understand in the same way to kallimuna aydihim, tashhadu arjuluhum, in the same way that our hands will say what they did on, in this world. Our book's going to be given to us. Yeah. You're not going to be able to deny anything that's in those books. And you want to make sure that it's not Munkar and Nakir you got to meet. Yeah. You want Bashir and Mubashir and someone's going to give you some glad tidings. Yeah. Now when we're coming, we understand that the right of the ear is the direction to the heart. Imam has made it clear to us now that that air has to be protected. Mm -hmm. Now, since we mentioned Ahl Bayt and Imam Sajjad salam, and b him being a descendant from Prophet Muhammad, we see the objection from the other side where a lot of books, no, not, not a lot of books, but some do mention a Prophet Muhammad enjoyed music and music gatherings. Now, is this true? And what can't, like, I mean, the greatest person who is telling him not to listen to music, yet we find him in books, he's listening and enjoying dancing and stuff. Sure. I find it very sad the way the image of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, his family has been tainted in our own literature, in the oh. Muslim world's literature. When Salman Rushdie wrote the satanic verses, I wasn't surprised when he said that I've used Muslim literature to write. There is some or there are some narrations in our books which have portrayed the Prophet, peace be upon him and his family, in the saddest of ways and wow. the most degrading of ways. Believe you me, there are certain anecdotes and narrations about the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him and his family, which are far from his character. Wow. About how he was in his bedroom, about how he was in his private life, open discussions about him, and these discussions highlight to us that the biography of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, his family, is a biography which has been tainted with lies by enemies of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, his family. Either those who claim to have converted to the religion of Islam in the guise of new Muslims who were originally from other religions, or those who claim to be close to him but ended up being the scribes of the Umayyads and the Abbasids. You're absolutely right when you say that there are traditions which say that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon his family, was a man who'd run around with dancers around him, music being around him. Yeah, that's unfortunate. And I've seen traditions where companions try and reprimand him. Wow. Wow. Which is unbelievable. Unbelievable. The man who God sent as a mercy to mankind, the man who God says is of sublime morality. There are narrations in the biographies 
which tell us that the likes of the first and the second caliph would reprimand the gathering of music, but the Prophet would say, don't worry, every nation has a day of Eid. Wow. So music is allowed today. Are you serious? As I, I remember reading in Bajr, Bukhari, narrations which are there which talk of the Prophet Muhammad in gatherings of music. Wow. And the companions are stunned why, for example, Aisha, the wife of the Prophet, is, and him are sitting together, and why they've got musicians, why they've got dancers. One narration even mentioned how he was telling his wife, Aisha, that, you know, the Ansar woman liked music. So have you guys prepared music for this gathering? Wow. I'm not surprised at the end of the month of Ramadan, the holy month of Ramadan. I wouldn't be surprised if there are Muslims who have already planned a nightclub or clubbing events or a party at the end of the holy month of Ramadan. Oh, yeah, I'm a hun I would not be surprised Don't at the end of the are. holy month of Ramadan. I wouldn't be surprised if there are Muslims out there who fasted the whole month and then on the day of Eid, they'll have a DJ, clubs, parties, yeah. rowdy, they've yeah. gone crazy. It happens. But some will turn around to you and say, because you know what, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon his family, on the day of Eid, he said, you know what, music's allowed. In the school of Ahlul Bayt, we reject all of these traditions. My biography of the Prophet, peace be upon him and his family, comes from the Imams of Ahlul Bayt It doesn't come from ex-pagans. My biography comes from the Imams of Ahlul Bayt And even in our biographies, I'm not surprised if there are fabrications. I'm not surprised in our books, if the Abbasids didn't even try and change some of our traditions and distort some of our works. And Muhammad Baqir al may Allah bless his soul, he has a discussion where he states, that the Imams would write something and then the governments of the time would take that literature and change it. So those who come and try and say that the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon his family was a man who used to say on the day of Eid, you know what, get the musicians out, get the dancers out. You know what, my wife, come, you, uh, let me piggyback you around. Cool. Let me piggyback you around, for example, the room and let's dance with the rest of the dancers. This is far away from the teachings of Ahlul Bayt alayhi mm -hmm. One of the questions that we got uh, says regarding the treaties of rights by Musajjad al Hakuq, is there an English translation for that? There is an English translation of Rasalat al Hakuq of Imam Zain al Abni alayhi salam. The analysis by Qudratullah al Mashayikhi and the translation Lisa Zainab Morgan, if I'm not mistaken. And Ansarian publications in Qum have it available or it's online on alislam.org. Mm -hmm. Now, another question that we got from Ma'asuma Sajjaj is if all of our body parts are going to testify against us, then what happens if we repent sincerely to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Will He forgive us? The doors of forgiveness are always open in the religion of Islam. Mm -hmm. Never ever close the doors of forgiveness on anyone. Don't ever judge anyone that that's their last moments and that they'll never change. Hurr <clears throat> bin Yazid al Riyahi taught us a wonderful lesson on the 10th of Muharram. Even in your last day, the door of last repentance, moments. last moment, the door of repentance is open for you. Wow. You've done an act where you've disobeyed God. God is merciful, God welcomes His flock. Mm -hmm. Every time there is a verse you'll find about hell, later God says, But we are the all forgiving. Wow. So the doors of forgiveness are open for all of us. Mm -hmm. Now, earlier you mentioned the terminologies, ghina, uh, tarb, and, and, and all these terminologies that you mentioned. Now, the Quran specifically, a lot of people argue that the Quran has not explicitly mentioned the word ghina. In what other terminology? How has the Quran addressed uh, music? This is always a fascinating question because even if I now, from now until tomorrow, give every ayah of the Holy Quran which refers to music, you'll still find people saying, but it's not in the Quran. Firstly, how many rak'ah do we pray Salat al Maghrib? Three. Isha? Four. Fajr? Two. Is it in the Quran? No. No. Does it say to pray in the Quran? Yes. Yes. For example, which ayah tells us pray? Is there any ayah in the Quran 
that says Maghrib is three or Isha is four? No. no. Who told us Maghrib and Isha were three and four? The Faish Jairs of Allah. Of course. The Imams of Ahlul Bayt. The Imams of Ahlul And that's why the Prophet said that I'm leaving behind for you two weighty things. Hold on to them and you'll never go astray. The Quran and the Ahlul Bayt. And my Ahlul Bayt, my Ahlul Bayt, my Ahlul Bayt. Wow. They will not separate from you. Till we meet and inshallah drink from that pool of kotha. Inshallah. When we look at any verse of the Holy Quran on any issue, I want to know what did Imam Al Baqir say on this? What did Imam Al Sadiq say? Mm -hmm. What did Imam Al Kadhim say? Because for they are the beacons of knowledge. Yes. There are numerous ayahs in the Holy Quran. Let me give you an example. If now someone tells you, show me an ayah in the Holy Quran. If I show him, for example, Surah 23, verse 3. Mm -hmm. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قد أفلح المؤمنون الذين هم في صلاتهم خاشعون والذين هم عن اللغو معرضون That person who's asking me where is it in the Quran You'd think it's someone who's a master of Arabic professor of Arabic knows Islamic history inside out So when I say to him والذين هم عن اللغو معرضون You'd think that the person was trying to say okay لغو I know the meaning The problem is the people who are asking half of them their Arabic is not at that level where they know how these terminologies were even being used at that time. Yes. And the other half are not acquainted with the traditions of Imam al-Baqir or Imam al-Sadiq when it comes to tafsir of these verses of the Holy Quran. When you're asking me, is music mentioned in the Quran? Firstly, as we said, there are many different words which were associated with the music at that time. Ghana is one. Tarab is another. Lahu is another. Lahu is another. All of these words have a relation to music. Either the playing of music, the listening to music, or the vanity of the words of the music. So, mm -hmm. Surah 23 verse 3. قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ Successful are the believers. What, how are they successful? الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ Those who have reached that humility in their prayer. The cognizance of God's presence. وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ عَنِ اللَّغْوِ مُعْرِضُونَ What's the correlation? Ah, and that? those who keep away from what? Because inna salat tanha an al fahsha wal munkar. Your prayer would keep you away from evil and decency. The next line, those who stay away from love. They asked Imam Sadiq, "What is love?" He said, "The words of the musicians. That the believers are not those who will listen to music and the words of the musicians." Mm -hmm. Now that's Imam Sadiq talking. Mm -hmm. Imam Sadiq, why does he need to mention music in this ayah? Why? Why? As it could Imam al have just mentioned something else. Why does he specifically say music and the word of the musicians? Because he knows there's a generation when he's living between the Umayyads and the Abbasids where Muslims were moving to the frivolous world of the musicians. Mm -hmm. So Imam al-Sadiq was making it clear, have you forgotten the meaning of Lagh? Another ayah in the Quran where a person actually purchases music mm -hmm. today we download music let's say for free but then there's others who pay there's others who pay for musicians i guarantee you that in some of the most respected families who love ahl al-bayt they will hire a musician for their son or daughter's wedding day wow. and they will be paying a hundred thousand dollars fifty thousand dollars a million dollars they'll do that if you show them the ayah surah 31 verse 6 وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَشْتَرِ لَهُوَ الْحَدِيثِ لِيُضِلَّ عَنْ سَبِيلَ اللَّهِ بِغَيْرِ عِلْمِ There are those who buy لَهُوَ الْحَدِيثِ Now again, someone says, well, does it say غِنَى? Does it say موسيقى? No. Imam al-Sadiq looks at the word لَهُوَ الْحَدِيثِ Says this refers to the words of the musicians. Those people who actually will pay a person to sing for them. And the Arabs used to do that. Some would actually pay a slave. Just come, you got a good voice, just come and sing for me. Allah says in the Quran, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَشْتَرِي There are those who buy لَهُوَ الْحَدِيثِ لِيُضِلَّ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ بِغَيْرِ عِلْمِ And this deviates them from the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's where Surah 31 verse 6 of the Quran. Now we mentioned two ayahs. Two ayahs. Wallah, I can mention now, from now until the Day of Judgment, 6,600 ayahs. Still someone will say, bring me Imam al-Sadiq and then I'll have to listen and think about it. Wow. I, we can only provide the hujjah. <laughs> yeah. Inna hadaynahu sabila, imma shakira wa imma kafura. Another ayah. 
There are those who when they see the clubs and the concerts will walk past with respect, will not go in and listen to that musician. Again, love is mentioned. وَإِذَا مَرُوا بِاللَّهْوِ مَرُوا كِرَامًا when they walk past love, when they walk past vain words, frivolous words, they will walk past with a decency. They will not allow any of that to affect them. Here you have in the Quran, Allah says, He's referring to the words of the musicians, the purchasing of music, and the walking past of places where the whole community or city has gathered for music. If now on my Facebook account, in Muharram, I put all the Imam Al-Hussein tags. Imam Al-Hussein, Karbala, Ashura, we will never forget who is Hussein and so on. But then a few months later, I put great concert, great night, great, oh, this is the best tune to rock. And so There's two hearts in one, what do you know? Yeah. A person has to make a decision. I'm on the path of whom? The path of the Prophet and his family and their tafsir of the Holy Quran. Not Sayyid Ammar's tafsir. Listen, I don't have no tafsir of the Quran and I'm no one who claims to know anything of the Holy Quran. I take from Imam al-Baqir Imam al-Sadiq. If Imam al-Baqir and Imam al-Sadiq have told me that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, his family has said, Surah 23 verse 3, Surah 25 verse 72, Surah 31 verse 6, even Surah 22 verse 30, for example. Wajtanibu rijsa min al-awthani, wajtanibu qawla zur. Qawla zur, Haj Ahmed. Wajtanibu rijsa min al-awthani, wajtanibu qawla zur, in Surah 22 verse 30. Imam al was asked about qawla zur. He says that qawla zur refers to what? Those words that people listen to, of the musicians that oppose the teachings of Islam. The teachings of reality, the teachings of God. Let me ask you, mm -hmm. in your, let's say, I don't like where this is going. Yeah, in your <laughs> travels around the world, Allah, can you name me a couple of lyrics, which are of a famous, let's say, musician of a genre, which you could argue could be determined or defined as qawla zur, Allah saying, keep away. From Qawla Zur. Qawla Zur. Mm -hmm. That, those lyrics which oppose the teachings of Ahlul Bayt. Mm -hmm. Has you ever come across any music which is completely against what Fatima Zahra salam would have taught? Because I've got to ask myself a question. Yes. Either I'm with Ahlul Bayt in full submission or what I feel like. Because remember in early Islam, there was a group of people who came to the Prophet, peace be upon his family, and they said to him, Ya Rasulullah, do you mind if like, we pray, we'll fast, but can we still gamble? Go on. There's some who came and said, yeah, so, you know, we, we pray, we fast, but can we still visit our idol once a year? Because someone will say this, that, listen, said Ammar, Muharram and, 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 you know, Muharram and Safar, I love Imam al Hussein, but do you mind if we just listen to music like just a couple of days of the year, like just have it all out, you know, guys and girls dancing, everything. When you're coming to Qawla Zur, have you, do you remember any lyrics of any musicians where you could say, that that lyric is opposite to what the Quran teaches? I mean, not really specific lyrics, but if you look at, you know, Wiz Khalifa and Snoop Dogg. Wiz Khalifa, they, they mashallah, have, what's he saying? I mean, in one Hujjat song. Islam, Wiz, yes. <laughs> Wiz Khalifa. I mean, that good, if you listen to, to the song, that good, you'll see what I'm talking about. That good, for example. But don't go listen to it. I mean, And is there any other examples? I'm sure there's many. Many examples. There are. Um, started from the bottom and you. It started you saw, from the bottom and then what? Uh, and now we're here. And now we're here. That doesn't sound too bad <laughs> in all honesty. But I'd gather that, you know, the type of people who are singing that with him aren't exactly lookalikes of the companions of Imam al-Hussein. Now, when we're looking at this, therefore, you've got all these verses in the Holy Quran supplemented with traditions from the Ahl al-Bayt and stories of the Ahl al-Bayt, Say, for example, someone says to me, well, I don't want Quran. Okay. <coughs> Imam al-Sadiq meets someone, says to him, where did you sleep last night? You've just come into town. He, slept, he said, I slept at so-and-so's house. The person said, I looked at Imam al-Sadiq. I noticed the change in his character, in his complexion. I said, Imam, what's wrong? He said, how could you sleep in that person's house? 
when that person is known to play music in their house. If Imam al-Sadiq felt there was no issue with music, we're going to come later on to discussing the genres. And, but if Imam al-Sadiq is looking at this person saying, you stayed at that person's house and you know that person got musicians and music around his house. The person asked the Imam, he said, Imam, and what happens to a house where music is played? Mm -hmm. What happens to a house where music is played? played? What happens? Imam Sadiq looked at him and he said, Do you not know that in a house where music is played, number one, the angels do not visit that house? Now, Kiram and Katabin are a group of people you want to respect. Yeah. Secondly, the supplications of the supplicants of that house are not answered. How many times we get people emailing us? Why is my du'a not being answered? Why is my du'a? In some cases, in some cases, I don't want to generalize. But when the Ahlul Bayt say, that's a person who's playing music in their house, which opposes the words of Ahlul Bayt, which is vain, which is frivolous. Then you have thirdly, he says, and do not be surprised if a sudden calamity affects that house. Sometimes a person says, I don't know what's happened to my house and everyone wants to blame it on black magic. Why blaming it on black magic? I remember when I gave my lecture on black magic a couple of years ago, the yeah. whole earth emailed me. I'm affected by black magic. What's the cure for black magic? What's this? What? Okay, wait. Sometimes it's not black magic. Sometimes even in the... In the dua kumail we find Allahumma khfir li dhunub al-lati ta'habis dua Sometimes there are sins that are making our dua not being answered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Therefore when Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam says this Imam is making clear to us That it's not just a matter of going to attend concerts Even you downloading these things at home Even these are things to think about Imam al-Kadhim alayhi salam done it in a different way Explain music in a different way. How? In Sufism. Yes. And Sufism music is an integral feature. And certainly the music in Sufism is far away from frivolous or vain. There's more of a case of folk chanting. Some call it Kawalis. Others give it different names. Bishr al-Hafi is a fundamental figure when you discuss spirituality in Sufism. Mm -hmm. Ahmed, Hafi, what does it mean in English? Hafi? Hafi. Barefooted? Barefooted. Someone thinks, hold on a minute, is this guy's surname Hafi? Yeah. Bishr al Hafi? No. Bishr al Hafi. Ah. Bishr al Hafi. Imam al Kadam was walking past his house one day. They were all listening to music in the house. When he was walking past the house that day, the narrations, what do they mention? They mention that one of the ladies of the house was outside the house, she was sweeping the floor. And Imam could hear the music being played inside, so Imam asked her a question. Is the owner of the house a free man or a slave? Look at the different angle which Imam approached. This is a wonderful explanation by Bab al Wow. Is the owner of the house a free man or a slave? The lady said, the owner of the house is a free man, of course. He said, you're right. If he was a slave, he'd recognize the master that he's disobeying. Subhanallah. Killer. In tashahud, in salah every day, what does a Muslim say? And please correlate this with when we're listening to vain or frivolous words of musicians which oppose the teachings of Ahlul Bayt. Ashhadu. an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika la. Wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasul. Rasul came first or Abd? Abd? The highest honor for the Holy Prophet peace be upon him and his family is what? His servitude. To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah abdihi. Yes. On the night of the ascension. Glory be to the one who ascended, his servant. When she went back in the house, Bishop looked at her, he said, who are you talking to? She said, this man, he looked like this, this complexion. He said to her, what did he say? She said, he... He said, is the owner of the house a free man or a slave? He said, what did you say? He said, I said, you're a free man, of course. He said, why? What was his reply? 
said yes, he's a free man. If he was a slave, he'd remember the Lord that he's meant to be worshipping and not disobeying. Wow. He felt so guilty. And you know that guilt, it's a wonderful thing. It shows you're alive. You see, if you're listening to music and you're listening to people who are cursing or frivolous or words which aren't cursing or frivolous, but purely something against the teachings of Ahl al-Bayt in terms of the principles, in terms of the ethos of the message, if you don't care about it anymore, I'd reflect on where my nafs is. I want my nafs to reach Mutma'inna, but I certainly don't want it to be at Ammara. Lawama is healthy. Bishop ran out of that, his house halfy. Not even wearing, he ran halfy. Where's my master, Musa ibn Ja'far? He knew it was Imam Musa ibn Ja'far. Wow. He said, Imam, please forgive me. Imam said, Allah will forgive you if you sincerely are repentant. Here, what did the Imam do? Imam didn't just come and say music is haram. He said, ask yourself, a servant of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, would they be listening to such personalities? Are these the people who are reflections of Ahlul Bayt, alayhi wa mm -hmm. Imam al radha alayhi salam, someone came to him and said, Imam, is music, uh, we've never heard you say music is haram. He said, simple. If I were to ask you the music you listen to, is it the music? Is it of the path of truth or the path of falsehood? Then you can make your decision. Yes. If you believe that that musician, the way they're dressed, the way they look, the way they're behaving in that video, if you believe that that's the path of Ahlul Bayt, you answer your Lord. Therefore, you find that Imams in some cases told us what the disadvantages are. And others, they told us, use your head. Do we really need to tell you what's haram? Exactly. When the person comes and asks me, Jay-Z, uh, what's the Kanye, other names? Wiz Khalifa, Kanye, Wiz Khalifa. Future, mashallah. Yeah. What's the other well, names? You know, I, I'm looking at so you, you look at the guy. If you think there's the type of guy who would have been with Ahlul Bayt, I'm going to listen to him. Yeah. I don't need to come and tell you every single tune, whether it's allowed or not. Yeah. Now, Sayyidina, we have a question from uh, Hassan Ali. He says, your opinion on the use of music uh, in uh, Noha and Marcia? In a Noha or a Marthiya or a Latmiya or a Nasheed, you must refer back to your Maraja. You'll find that there are Maraja who completely prohibit. Even if it's the words about Ahlul Bayt, salam, they prohibit if you could see that this is causing people to act in a way far from the teachings of Ahlul Bayt, salam. A person can't just put a tune of a famous, you know, nasheed or qasida so that they could rave it up that day. Yeah? And then the Islam wants you to have a dignified. Yes. So Islam wanted you to be dignified. Mm -hmm. Sorry to cut you off. We do apologize for the noises uh, interfering with the show coming from outside Fibil Aramin. Pilgrims are passing by right now uh, with a loudspeaker uh, reciting to Muhsin uh, alayhi salam. Sure. So, as yes. I said, so a person has to be someone who is dignified. Yes. It doesn't matter. Nasheed, Latmiya, maintain your dignity. Mm -hmm. Maintain your respect. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to sit here and deny that I'm sitting here as an angel who in his youth was not affected by these things. But when we come back and look at the Maraja, the Maraja are telling us that even if it's something which is a Nasheed, don't let that be an excuse for you to suddenly act like how you'd act in a you know, hip-hop or R&B stage. Mm -hmm. Try and maintain your dignity at all times. Mm -hmm. Now, question from Ahmed Ali. Uh, can we put rap or can, can a person rap to the Ahlul Bayt with no beat? Once again, if a person is reciting poetry, what's rap? Poetry. If you're reciting this poetry at a particular beat, at a particular speed, you haven't used, for example, a tune from gatherings which are known as gatherings which are frivolous yes. or full of vanity. There's no harm. On the contrary, the poets of Ahlul Bayt, a person who writes poetry for Ahlul Bayt, salam, you, inshallah, will continue to be someone in the line of the great poets of Al Muhammad. Inshallah. You know, from the past of Da'bal bin Ali al Khuzai to Haydar al Halli, to others who have done a phenomenal service to Ahlul Bayt through their poems. We need more out there who write poems for Ahlul Bayt. But don't try and mix it with that which is associated with scenes which aren't of the best of morals in their background. Mm -hmm. Now, another question uh, that is also related. Uh, to what we're talking about is, is the, the, the drums that are used. Is that allowed? And okay, because we, we could talk about instruments yes. and buying, yes. you know, lahwa al-hadith. 
Is also drums purchasing the same way or no? When you look at the ulama and their discussion of instruments, it's very interesting. You see, you've got, you've got a certain context as well for these discussions. Mm -hmm. I remember one of the great scholars who I had studied under, when we were discussing this, he says, there are certain instruments which are definitely only used for the gatherings of frivolity, for example. And he tried to mention a few. Then there are other instruments which can be used for halal and for haram. And he had an interesting division. Yes. In his division, this is his division. So there's something like the, in his opinion, the oud, for example, that wasn't going to be used for anything holy. Yeah. But in his opinion, for example, the drums, the violin, the violin. While there are traditions that one may argue that for example, maybe there's a tradition that says this is something the context may be associated with the Abbasids and their immoral usage of it. But if I can use an instrument for the purposes of serving the madhab of Ahlul Bayt today in Iran, for example, you have films that have been made where instruments are clearly being used. Yeah. But the ulama have said that those particular instruments, if they're used, you can't just say that they're absolutely haram in all their usages. There are some contexts where a film may be made about Nabi Yusuf السلام, or about Imam al السلام, As long as this isn't going to lead to lahu or lahu or qawl zur but it's being used in a way which is going to serve the religion, then you have certain scholars who allow. We can't put an absolute blanket and say that every single instrument has been prohibited. Mm -hmm. The drums had a purpose, say rallying people for war and not the purpose of sitting and you know suddenly being in a rave with all of them. You know what I mean? So yeah. there's positive and negative usages mm -hmm. of instruments. But to put a blanket statement, you'll find that there are scholars who have said that no, there are some of these instruments that can be used in a positive mm -hmm. manner. Someone's asking about clarinets. I'm not the person to ask about each and every instrument. Mm -hmm. I don't have a degree in that field. Mm -hmm. Suffice for us to refer back to our maraja and inshallah they can guide us. Inshallah. Uh, this person is saying, uh, uh, what is your view on people who listen to music uh, to please soften or to stay away from depression? Does it really keep us away from depression? Music keeping me away from depression? I'm not going to deny that, say for example, some maraja completely prohibit. Some might say classical. It has a soothing or calming effect. Some may say, if you follow your marja, you ask. But if that classical music is helping you, then there may be some who allow it. But I would say that while depression, there are, medic there are people who are experts in medicine who can discuss this much more than me. Ahlul Bayt salam, go and study their traditions. Build a relationship with the Holy Quran with the works of Al Muhammad السلام, with the mustahab, the recommended acts that they've left behind for you. These are things that hopefully will help you. Don't let people tell you, well, you know what? If you don't listen to music, then you definitely never going to be happy. Because I've no. heard people say, you know what? Yeah. I can't drive except that I listen to music or I, I can't sleep except that I listen. You know, even there's a verse in the Quran that with their voices, shaitan will affect them. Wow. Now, when the Quran is saying this to us. You'll find that even some of the discussions concerning the Dajjal, the one-eyed imposter system, that yes. system that seeks to deviate, one of the things that it'll do is that it will make people say, well, you know what, music is fundamental in my life. If I don't have it, I can't be happy. Yes. My dear brothers and sisters, there are oceans of wonderful anecdotes and traditions about the Ahlul Bayt, alayhi salam which all of us should go and open up and study. Don't reach a stage where you're that spiritually low, where you turn around and say, well, you know, if I don't have this, then I'm not going to be strong enough. Habib and Muslim, Maytham and Kumail, they needed music for them to reach the highest levels of spirituality. Always Al-Qarani and Salman and Abu Dhar and Ammar bin Yasser needed music. Some may argue that they live, they've lived in a different time, different era. Habibi, they don't have Arabs, the same gadgets Arabs are Arabs. Music is fundamental in their lives. Believe you me. We discussed. There was music at the time of the Prophet, peace be upon him. Of course. The Umayyads loved music. 
The Abbasids love music. Mutawakkil Abbasi used to have a singer on the 50th of Sha'ban. He said, where is she? She was a dancer for him. 15th of Sha'ban, where is she? They said to him, oh, she's gone to Hajj. He's like, it's Sha'ban. She had gone to do ziyarat in Imam Hussein alayhi salam. She still had an affinity with Imam Hussein. When she came back, he was angered with her. How dare you leave? She was a dancer and singer. He's a Khalifa. Mutawakkil Abbasi, they try and praise him by saying, uh, sunnah, the person who ensured the sunnah of Rasul. Wow. These were all listening to music. Don't think that the Arabs all of a sudden have started to listen to music. And don't think that Salman and Abu Dhar, their tribes, weren't people who enjoyed music. These Arabs loved these musicians coming in Badr, Uhud, Khanda, Khaybar. They wanted music to rally them. So for a person to come and say today, well, you know what? They lived in a different time. They lived at a time. Why was it called Jahiliya? When God calls a period Jahiliya, uh -huh. it's not just burying your daughters alive. Yeah. It's the merrymaking, the alcohol, the adultery, the music. Many of these go hand in hand with each other. Don't get me wrong. When I sit here in front of you, you think these names that you mention, I disagree with you that they have wonderful voices? I don't disagree. You think I disagree with you that a person does not want to hear some of their tracks or some of their lyrics? I don't disagree. I, firstly, have the highest role models I want to live up to. And they are Muhammad and Al-Muhammad mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Secondly, I have a day of judgment. When I go in that grave, mm -hmm. my wedding I'm going to be asked about. I'm going to be asked about my funeral. I'm going to be asked about the way I live between the two. Mm. I don't want blemishes on my book. I've already got too many. Yes. All I need to do is reflect and ask myself a question that that which I'm listening to, is it a reflection? Now someone asked me a question. They said to me, mm -hmm. That, okay, I go to a shopping center. There's music played there. So what do I do? There's a difference between a place you've gone purposely to listen to music and a place where music is in the background. Yes. When I'm in a shop, if all of a sudden music is played, I'm like, oh, this is a great track. I'm going to stay here. That's haram. If, however, I'm shopping, listen, this is always going to be in the background. But I'm not going to the shopping center simply because they play great music. That's a different story. Mm -hmm. So those people have also tried to say, well, you know, there's music everywhere. So how are we going to stop it? No. There are conditions also to the music that we listen mm -hmm. to. Hopefully we can continue this uh, in, a in a different time. We will get to answer some of the questions that have come in about music, uh, but in the second part of today's episode, inshallah. So respective viewers, do stay tuned. for We have reached the last portion of today's episode, the general Q&A with Dr. Amman Naqshwani, but we will take a short break. Live footages from the holy city of Karbala, Amal Hussein and Abel Fadl Abbas. So do stay tuned for that and don't go away because we are coming to back to you uh, very shortly. So stay tuned.
Respective viewers, welcome back. Hope inshallah enjoyed those live footages uh, from the holy city uh, of Karbala. And uh, we are back with the last portion. Uh, general Q&A with Dr. Sina Ammar and Naqshwan Sayyidina. Welcome back. Thank you. Allah uh, Islamkum. Now, before the break, the discussion was uh, amazing. Uh, we did get a lot of uh, feedback uh, and a lot of questions relating to that. But we will go to the general Q&A. If we have time, we'll come back to uh, the other questions as well. The first question that we have uh, is... One second, sorry. Uh, so, yeah. Th so, the first question that we have is... Uh, one second. Yes. If a lot of people... Uh, a husband makes a promise to his wife, a sincere promise. Is he, obl is he obligated to fulfill it? Well, naturally, he's obligated to fulfill that promise. But again, are we talking legal? Are we talking ethical? Yes. A prenuptial agreement before a marriage takes place, that is something which is legally binding. And that remains. Ethically, a Muslim is always one who looks after their promises. Mm -hmm. Another question that we have, uh, what do I do when I'm at a wedding and music started to play in the background? Well, we have a, social, a principle for any social gathering, and that is that the moment the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are broken in that gathering, mm -hmm. in the sense that there is an aim, for example, from the fellow Muslim to break one of the laws of the Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam, then it's not permissible for us to be in that gathering. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't cause a scene, nor should I be rude, but rather I can excuse myself by saying, for example, that I thank you for the invitation, and now mm -hmm. I'm going to make a move. But there's no need for a person to be rude to someone else. At the end of the day, if they have taken that on board, and they believe that that is the way of the Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam then it's completely up to them. Mm -hmm. But for a person who follows Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam the moment a gathering is mixed with, for example, the ecstatic behavior, and which goes on to frivolous behavior, and sinning begins to take place. Today, sadly, we hear in some of our weddings, that's normal now for the bride and the groom to make out in front of everyone. Or it's normal now for the bride to dance with all her cousins and her husband's friends. Now, where these things came from, I do not know. But inshallah, our community can reflect. Mm -hmm. Another question that we have is, I am mentally challenged and wearing hijab uh, in the heat increases my headaches. Uh, we have a call before the, this question. Uh, Salaamun Alaikum, Brother Muhammad. Salaamun Alaikum. Um, Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Um, I actually have called to um, ask a question uh, from uh, Dr. Ammar Nakhshawani. Assalamu alaikum to you, Dr. Ammar. Wa alaikum um, assalam wa rahmatullah. I, I actually, maybe my question is not directly related to the uh, program of tonight, the music program, but I would. I would like to ask this question from you. I want to uh, take your time long. I just uh, wanted to say that I have been following your um, majalis for around four years online. And honestly, as a 23-year-old um, um, young student, uh, I have learned a lot of things from you. And I think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has answered um, many of my questions by, by your lecture. Thank you so much. Thank uh, you. My, Thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Amman Akhtawani, my specific question is that um, around, around me, I see many of my uh, friends and uh, colleagues or uh, Muslim uh, young uh, people who are, you know, everyone is studying a certain specialty. One wants to become a doctor, one, myself, I'm studying architecture, some, what else is studying something else. However, our goals in life are very personal goals, you know. Um, everybody is trying to achieve something and when we have discussion for personal desires to have good personal life. My question is how can we direct um, the, the the work and the effort we are we are we are and the time that we are we are uh, investing in the way of uh, Islam, in, in a way that it would be a global um, objective that would satisfy our spiritual um, um, goals rather than only personal uh, desires uh, of which, are, which are worldly. Um, sure. I, I don't know if my question is clear enough. Thank you. Or, it's uh, very clear. Thank you, so Thank you so Thank much. Thank you very much, Dr. Ammar. Thank you. Habib Sayyidina. Islam is the religion of balance. Yes. 
you know, uh, Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib says, live in this world like you're going to live in it forever. But plan for the hereafter as if it's going to come tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Therefore, try and put a balance in planning for your worldly gains and for your hereafter. Yes. Don't focus too much on just doing the religious work and not do anything for your worldly aspirations. Yeah. Because worldly aspirations still, they're going to be for the benefit of your religion and mm -hmm. for the benefit of humanity. Mm -hmm. And when you serve the creation, you're serving the creator. Yes. Try and be someone who serves the whole of God's creation. Not just the Muslim, the non-Muslim, anyone who's malnourished, poverty stricken, in need of charity. Always try and be there for them. Mm -hmm. But make a nice balance in your educational life, your family life, as well as your spiritual life, as the great prophets and saints of Allah did. Mm -hmm. Now, this person asks, uh, we do ask the question once again, I am mentally challenged and wearing hijab in the heat increases my headaches. Sorry, I missed uh, the topic on hijab. What shall I do? Am I now observing hijab due to my religion? Well, if someone is mentally challenged, the laws differ for them when it comes to the obligations in the school of Ahlul Bayt. My advice would be to write to your marja and to ask him and to make clear in which way you are mentally challenged and whether the laws will apply to you in terms of your particular situation. Mm -hmm. Now, this person, uh, Amal Ja'far, uh, Ja'far, yes. Is it permissible to do, uh, to do safar in order to break, safar, in order to break your fast? If the day is too hard, please explain. Once again, a question in relation to people's maraja and who they follow. Mm -hmm. If you feel the fasting is a fast which is too long for you, the maraja differ in relation to what one's responsibilities are and the length of the fasts. Mm -hmm. If you're looking at, for example, those who now are fasting 20 hours, 21 hours, Ayatollah Sistani, may Allah lengthen his life, for example, discusses that fast as much as you can. But if you do get to that stage where it's extremely unbearable, that something's going to happen which is harmful to you, then there may be the breaking of the fast, but of course you would have to make this up later. Mm -hmm. Then there are other scholars who, for example, like Ayatollah Zanjani has discussed, that some may be allowed to take, for example, or drink a little bit of water, for example. Or even, as we know, there are the rules regarding the tasting of food that's being cooked at a minimal amount. Yes. Then there are others like, for example, Ayatollah Shirazi, both Sayyid Sadiq Shirazi and Ayatollah Nasr Makarim Shirazi, who have discussed about the lengthy hours and the difficulties in fasting these lengthy hours and have come to their own conclusion based on, for example, the urf of what is seen as being day. Mm -hmm and how it relates to a normal day. Therefore, each person should refer back towards their marja mm -hmm. to see that what are the laws when the fast becomes unbearable for mm -hmm. them. Now, we do have another call. Salaamun Alaikum. Brother Amir, Salaamun Alaikum. Alaikum Yes. Welcome to the show, Ramadan with Dr. Sayyid Ammar Naqshawani. Ramadan Mubarak to you and to Sayyid Ammar. To you as well. Uh, I have one question that's always uh, running around in my mind. It's, yes. just, uh, uh, it's not maybe also to be a nice topic, but I wanted to ask it to say this. Uh, Sayyidina, I want to ask you between, uh, we have a hadith that says, وَلَا تَخْلُ الْأَغْدُ مِنْ So after uh, Prophet Isa alayhi salam has passed away or has raised up, who was the Hajjah Allah between that period and uh, until the arrival of Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wa salam? Thank you very much. Inshallah, we'll get to answer that. So the Hajjah, who was the Hajjah on this earth? Yeah. Right now. Allah yeah. subhanahu wa ta'ala. No, yeah. right, we're talking, uh, I don't think he's talking right now. I think I heard the question as between Prophet Jesus and Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yes, so, yes. Wa between Prophet Muhammad and Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. yeah, yes. that's the point. We have, for example, a discussion concerning this, and I have a lecture which is available on YouTube which discusses the period between Prophet Jesus to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you go on YouTube and you type my name, it is from my Shahar Ramadan lectures last year on the seerah of the Prophet, peace be upon him, his family. And the lecture looks and is titled, if I'm not mistaken, 
after Prophet Jesus or Prophet Jesus to Prophet Muhammad. And within there, I've discussed all the opinions of the ulama concerning the disciples of Jesus and their position, the awsiya of Jesus between Jesus and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As well as the discussion that if there wasn't a, if there wasn't a hujjah, does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala judge a group of people if the proof has not come to them? These were the three main discussions that I have discussed in that particular lecture. Refer please back to that lecture from last, uh, the holy month of Ramadan last year about the period between Jesus and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Yes, so thank you very much. Uh, another question that we have, can you give us some tips on how to memorize the Quran? A few tips so we can... A few tips on. on how to memorize the Holy Quran. First and foremost, I would say, first memorize the names of the chapters of the Holy Quran. Mm -hmm. Begin by just memorizing the names of the chapters. In order? In order. Well, naturally, I don't want you to memorize 25 and then 114. <laughs> of course, I want an order. Yes. Try and memorize the chapters of the Holy Quran. If you can, try and begin with the smaller ajza of the Holy Quran. Yes. Begin with Juz Amma, then 29, 28, and so on. Try and work your hardest on recital of the Qur'an as much as you can. Not slowly the words and the verses will become part and parcel of your life. Mm -hmm. And if you can, try and memorize a page a day of the Holy Qur'an. If you're not feeling that day, then try another day. Don't exhaust yourself. Make it something which you enjoy doing. Mm -hmm. And before beginning any act, try and dedicate that act to one of the family of the Prophet, peace be upon him, his family. Yes, uh, another question that we have, last question today. Uh, what's the opinion of Abu Hanifa and Ahmed bin Hanbal uh, on music? Ali from Canada, yes. Abu Hanifa on music went to the extent to saying that if music is played in a house, you can raid that house. You can? Raid the house and uh -huh. stop the music playing. Ahmed bin Hanbal's son, Abdullah, asks him a question about music. To which Ahmed bin Hanbal replies, music is something that grows hypocrisy in the Muslim. Therefore, these are the opinions of the Hanbali and the Hanafi schools on these areas. Mm -hmm. uh, last question, I think this is very nice because a lot of people, you know, get to, to experience. Uh, Sabika uh, says, what do you do if my kids, what to do if my kids uh, have scheduled uh, music classes in their school? Should I have her sit outside of her class? Uh, while her friends attend, she may feel left out, or should I let her go ahead and attend? Well, one, one school of thought is to say that, for example, the learning of the musical instruments is something which is frowned upon. Another school says, no, not all musical instruments are frowned upon, and nor may they necessarily be at the age of adolescence or taklif where these laws are binding upon them. Mm -hmm. Best to refer to your marja and see what his advice, inshallah, is. One final word to say yes. before we conclude. Sheikh Abdul Hamid Kishk, may Allah bless his soul, the famous Egyptian scholar and preacher of mm -hmm. Cairo, on the 10th of Muharram said something beautiful. He said, knowledge lies on the ground in Karbala while music sits on the throne in Damascus. Wow. And that should give you an understanding of hopefully where you would have been on the 10th of Muharram. While music sat on the throne in Damascus, in Damascus knowledge Damascus. lay on the ground in Karbala. Allah, thank you very much, Sayyidina, for joining us tonight. Hopefully we can you know, get to uh, learn as much as possible from tonight's episode. Uh, so respective viewers, thank you very much for tuning in. If you missed out on a part of today's show, or you didn't get the, the chance to view it, uh, you can log into our YouTube channel at Imam Hussein 3 tv or you can just go re refresh this page on Facebook, YouTube, and uh, you'll see the whole episode uh, right there in front of you. We do thank you very much for joining us tonight. Stay tuned for the upcoming episodes. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.